Self-Quest, Issue 3, The Challenge, Part 1. Surviving a cruel, three-day journey through the scorching desert sands, the Wolf Riders come upon a wondrous elven village, flourishing in the midst of the wilderness. Welcome to Sorrow's End. Sorrow's End? Kata, that's what you named this place. How? You are elves indeed, brave travelers. Our race is of one heart and one mind, no matter the circumstances which shape our behavior, or our bodies. She is tall, this regal elf woman. Tall and beautiful beyond compare. <sighs> the wolf riders shrink from her in superstitious awe. For only in their oldest legends have they known of such a being. Uh, high one? Are you one of the high ones? <laughs> no, child. You flatter me. Old I may be, but not that old. I am Saba of the Sunfolk, some of whom are pleased to call me Mother of Memory. Do not be afraid. Have you never seen an aged elf before? Ah, no. I see that even the eldest among you is but a stripling. Well now. And you? What is it they call you? Cutter? A fine name for a fighting cockerel. Dear me, there's even a crest here to complete the image. My heart rejoices that you are here at last. Long have I believed that other children of the High Ones still dwelled in the lands beyond the desert. You come from that green growing place, which is legend to all but myself. You see, I am old enough to remember a time before the village. A time when my family crossed the burning waste, just as you have done, to settle here in the oasis we named Sorrow's End. Did the humans chase you away from your hole too? Humans? The word seems to strike her, like a sharp blow. This harsh world has wrought many changes in our kind. Countless years have passed since I was as young and resilient as you, Wolf Riders. But I remember, oh yes, I remember the humans. And still they fear us, after all this time. What a pity. Well, you are safe now. At any rate, my woodland cousins, there are no humans here. <laughs> that night, a grand celebration is held to welcome Cutter and his tribe. Never have these shy wood elves experienced such boisterous gaiety or such generous hospitality. Merry laughter and rollicksome music echo from the hillsides as the wolf riders take in every sight, scent, and sound with wide-eyed wonder. But not all eyes reflect the gladness of celebration. Rayek has long been chief hunter of the Sunfolk. Not for him is the tilling of the soil or the placid domesticity of village life. He is thrilled in the use of powers long forgotten by most of his people. And he has reveled in the village's dependence on him during times of poor harvest. But now, another hunter has come. A strong one with a fierce band of followers at his side. And worst of all, <laughs> this upstart has dared to recognize Lita for his own. Lita, daughter of the blind sun toucher. Lita, the uh -huh. only maiden who understands the old powers as Rayak does. No, Rayak bears no welcome for the wolf riders and none especially for their bold young chieftain. So begins the merging of two very different tribes. In the days that follow, the wolves adapt easily to their new environment, shedding much of their thick fur, and taking delight in the variety of fresh new game to be found. But while the wolf pack quickly makes itself at home in the mountains, the Wolf Riders are slow to give up their old habits of secrecy and solitude. You have opened your houses to us, and we thank you. But these caves will serve us well enough. You wish, Rankata, but did not hide from the sun forever. We 
Da, come with me. I'm taking these blankets to the wolf children. Those dark, cheerless caves must be so cold at night. You go, Shen Shen. I don't want to. Because of Kata? Really, sister. Must you be so unforgiving? He may have frightened you, but he didn't do any harm. And he did apologize. You ought to be more friendly. Shen Shen, you are a fool to encourage her. Lita would do well to avoid those barbarians altogether, especially Cutter. Well, by the midday fumes, Rayek grows more ill-mannered every day. The strangers make him nervous, that's all. Pooh, he's needed a good taking down for some time. And son bless me, I think Cutter may be the one to do it. Unaware of Shen Shen's mischievous notion, Rayek hunts, alone as always. He has never needed anyone's help. His method is simple. The effect, inescapable. Calmly, my bristling friend. You will not feel this. You do your prey no honor to take the fight out of it like that. Huh? What do you know of honor? You are more beast than elf. Is it an honor for animals to die in terror and pain? My way spares them that suffering. Oh. Is that how you plan to get Lita? Stay away from her, barbarian. I warn you, do not cross me. Or you will stand no more chance than this! But Rayek's stern threat has no effect on the smitten wolfrider. Cutter hasn't eaten for two days. He thinks of nothing but Lita. Uh -huh. Sometimes it happens like that. There's no telling when or why. Somehow an outfit lad and a maiden recognize each other and bang, it speaks. There's nothing either one of them can do but accept it for the Capote. You're sure of it? She's the one? Yes. I knew it the moment I saw her and so did she. Leah. She knows my soul name Skywise. I'd stake my life on it. Then you should talk to her. I will. Tomorrow. Lita, many days have passed without a word between us. Why do you deny the truth we both know? Truth? What truth? I don't know what you mean. Yes, you do. In my tribe, we don't play games with our hearts. We know. We huh? <laughs> What is it?